courtship period is the foundation of every marriage and how you spend your courtship period will determine your realities in marriage hi everyone i am princess adibola polina as you know and you're welcome to my talk show today today we'll be talking about questions you need to ask your partner before you say yes i do like i said the other time courtship period is the foundation of a marriage can you build a house that doesn't have a foundation that is how a marriage is remember marriage is an institution that you go to and you collect certificates before doing tests and writing exam so the best thing you can do during your courtship period is to do what to prepare ahead and be intentional how you spend your courtship period will determine the reality of your marriage you can spend 10 years and not know the right thing about your partner you might not make any progress if all you do is to go to a restaurant today, tomorrow, picnic, wear couple matching clothes. And it's not bad if you want to go to a restaurant. It's not bad if you want to go for picnic. It's not bad if you want to enjoy yourself. But that should not be the main purpose of your courtship period. Courtship period is a time you need to sit down, pray together, be intentional about your marriage, be intentional about your future. What you refuse to talk about in your courtship will wait for you in marriage. Again, I said, what you refuse to talk about in marriage will in courtship will wait for you in marriage. How many of you can build a house without laying the right foundation? And you just tell me that because you want to build a house now, you just you've gotten a land, you just go to the bush. Before you know it, you just put a um, block or bricks on it and start building. What will happen even if rain fall on that day? Even if nothing happens on that very day, what will happen later? It will fall so you want to build the right foundation you need to go down you need to go deep deep and deeper you are not to go into marriage with assumptions i know mr tolani will take care of me i know my wife can cook i know my friends can clean the house i know my friends will be a good helper when we get married no you don't go to you don't get married with assumptions you don't get married assuming this will happen assuming that will happen and again just because someone is a christian does not mean he's a regenerated christian not because he's going to church doesn't mean he's saved not because he's a choir doesn't mean he's sanctified not because just because he's a chorister rather just because he's doing everything that you see yeah this man is a man of god he's speaking capital letter tongue doesn't mean he is a child of god you will not want to get married and hear that your father-in-law must sleep with you on your wedding night before your husband sleep with you that is the reason why you need to ask questions i hope you understand now then i want you to know these things i know there are some people that will say even if you ask 100 questions he might not tell you the truth fine and that is why you are a christian and you have the designing spirit now that thing you should know before you ask any question is that you look at their facial expression how they speak and also that is why it is not always good to get into courtship just because you want to get do wedding there are people that they plan all their courtship period what they plan is their wedding can i shock you wedding is just a day i think i remember i was going to pastor femi lazarus during this last week and he was saying that a wedding is just like a burial ceremony when people finish burial ceremony what would they say bye bye adieu papa the same thing with wedding after everything after all the congratulations after all you made a good bride after all the you know understand all the priorities of marriage and the wedding day you will be left alone with your partner then you'll be left alone with your realities so it is better you do what you ask questions because everybody will leave and it will be it will only be you and your partner that will be inside the ship now the number one thing you should be doing before you ask questions like the number one thing you should be doing in courtship is praying together prayer is very important you pray for the future you pray for everything that concerns you now other things you need to ask let's go to what you need to ask in courtship before marriage or before you say yes i do now praise god god has provided a man for you and you are planning to get married to that man the first question you need to ask is about his salvation experience is he born again is he saved is he a child of god you need to know that yes there are a lot of people that call lord lord and they are not a child of god we have even seen pastors prophets that come in the name of the lord that they are not of god and that is why you as a person you need to 
to know that this person I want to settle down with is a child of God. Number two question is, is he baptized in the Holy Ghost? Is he sanctified? Yes, you need to ask that question and to be sure about his salvation experience. Another thing you need to ask your partner is, what is their belief? You know, we have, a lot of, we have a lot of beliefs in Christendom. We have, uh, okay, now, do your partner believe in speaking in tongues? You know, there's some churches that don't speak in tongues, and maybe your partner comes from that church, and when you get married and you're not doing your devotion, and like, ah, and he was like, he's not possible, what is a kalabobo? You don't say that in my house. That is why you need to ask that question. Also, you need to ask about praying with kanju. There's some churches and there's some denominations that pray with kanju. And when your belief is not in that, how would you do that? Then covering of ear when praying. I as a person, I came from a church and a background and a home that believes in praying in church. I remember my mom, anytime she wants to covering her hair rather, anytime she wants to pray, even if somebody is just saying, ah, let's share the place before you know it, she's like taking anything beside that to cover her hair. And I grow to do like that too. That's why I'm doing our courtship that my fiance was asking me, now my husband was asking me that, must you cover your ear anytime you want to pray? And he asked me about that belief too. You know, when we talk about it, you know that, okay, this is the term that this lady is, and it's not against it, true. There are some people that don't do such. Another thing is um, using rosaries, falling under anointing. You need to ask these questions to be sure of their faith, of what they believe in. You can also add to it. The, the third one, I don't even know the number again, is who is their mentor? Do they have a mentor? Who is their marriage counselor? They have someone that when you call the person that, hello sir, my husband did this and this and this. They are afraid of the person and they can listen to the person. See, uh, this journey is not a journey you can do alone. You need guidance, you need counseling, you need help. Do they have this kind of person? Now, the church you attend, before then, I think yes, I have a case like that where I I have a lady that the mentor was the one teaching the fans what to say to my own daughter. Like the fans, the mentor will be the one to say, okay, um, pray with her today. Okay, it's time to get married and all that. The mentor is the one saying everything. The man did not have anything to say, anything to do about his life. He is the man that is controlling his life. You should know that this is what you are into. Same with families too. You should know that this is what you are about to get into. I think we need to do this thing in two so that I don't know. Maybe we have a part B of it. Another thing you need to ask is the church they attend. Yes, churches used to cause a lot of issues in marriage today. I am a deeper lie. I am from CAC. I am from Redeem. I am from this. I am from that. Be sure of the church you'll be going to after marriage. Reason being that you will not want to build a home where you yourself will be you be you be going to another church and your husband will be going to another church and before you know it your children will grow seeing the friend's faith You're supposed to hear the same word of god as you are growing together as a family all right another question you need to ask yourself is numbers of children you would like to have there are some men that they want half dozen <laughs> i know of somebody that wanted half dozen some wanted no, it's half dozen actually. Six, six is half dozen. So he said when he did, when he did not give birth to six, ah, they, they have not they have not gotten to their full stop. So that kind of thing should have been discussed before marriage. Then another thing, the first thing I should even have I should have said is genotype. The issue of genotype. Hey Jesus, I don't know how you do it. Please, love is not enough in marriage. Love is not enough. That is why you need to know all these things. If a man is AS and you are AS, you should know that. The Lord will help you share the grace of grace in fellowship and go your separate ways. Well, to you, some people you might say your faith carries it. But all right, another thing to talk about in doing before you say I do is dressing. You need to talk about dressing, it's very important. Some men do not like you to wear trousers, and you as a person you always wear trousers. If you are before you know it, there will be issues in marriage. Talking about a child, too. So I have seen a family where the father did not used to wear trousers. Ah, sorry, the father did not believe in wearing trousers and the wife is wearing trousers for the daughter. You know, it's, it's an issue between them. So you have to ask all those questions. Then you need to talk about your health. It's very important. I have seen, it's not like I have seen, there is a man that um, before they, if anything happened in that, uh, in that house, in that home, you have to lay his hand on their head and pray for them. When he prays for them, everything is set. He believes that even when to the case, when the issue is getting out of hand, you should you need to ask about how we do it. Is it that you are this kind of person that if a male doctor is around when I want to give birth, 
am I going to give birth in that hospital or we have to wait for a doctor to come? You need to ask all those questions about your fears too. The fears in marriages, your fears that you have, you need to tell the person. Another thing, you know, there are a lot of things you need to ask, but I think I'll have to stop here. And if time permits me, maybe next time I will do another video where I talk about another thing on what you need to ask. Another thing you need to ask is alcohol. There are some females that doesn't that used to drink alcohol, and there's some men that used to drink alcohol. So you need to ask her, Oga, do you used to drink alcohol? You know, if you ask this question, it will not kill you. Don't base your marriage on assumption. Assumption kills. You will end up crying and having different heartaches. So it's better you cross all the T's and dot all the I before you enter into it. Then the last thing I will talk about is you ask him, how do you divine submission? There are some men that believe that until you kneel down to serve them, you have not served them. There's some men that believe that your act of showing respect to them is by actually calling them eh, as from Yoruba tribe, ekabo, ekaso, ekule, anything you want to say, use eh. There are some men that doesn't care about that. So ask their view about submission. Ask about how things will go. Then another thing you should talk about, sorry, is your wedding date. Don't start a courtship and not know when and what time you need you have to wed and you want to wed. Again, please talk about if it's a ministry man. I really want to cut this, but I don't know if I can cut it. If the woman is having a ministry or the man is having a ministry, talk about your purpose, your vision, your ministry, your ministerial goal and all that. Where you want to live in, having a joint account, finances is very important. There's some men that believe that you need to put money together. And you came from a place where you don't joke with your finance with anybody. You need to ask about that question. You want to have a living mate, you need to ask that question. Your courtship period is very, very intentional. If you have been, if all you have been doing is to talk, geez, ah, my father love me, my home, my mommy love me, I have a sister, I love you, I this, I that. If all you have been doing is that, you need to stop today. Not that you will stop, but you need to what? You need to hold on and start talking. Talk it out. Get a book and start writing them. Get a book, yes. Get a book and start writing them. And as you are doing this, you know, I said something check their facial expressions check it's not that you ask sitting one day and you start saying what is your hobby what is your this no you take it one step after the other and i pray for you that the lord will help you you will not fall into any wrong hand you will not she marry you will not marry the person you're not supposed to marry you will not marry a, a sheep in wolf's a, a, a sheep in wolf's clothing no a wolf in sheep clothing yes because we have a lot of men that are wolves in sheep clothing they, they look like sheep they look gentle but inside them is something we don't know you will not marry wrong in the name of jesus and as they are saying it they will be saying the truth and the lord will give you the designing spirit to be able to know the right thing in the name of jesus the lord will help you the lord will help your marriage in the name of jesus the lord will join you with you in the name of jesus all right thank you so much for joining me today i hope you learned one thing or the other uh i would like you to follow and subscribe to our youtube channel to get more of this and i would like you to follow us on our Facebook and do and I pray the Lord will bless you in Jesus name all right my name remain princess at the Bola Paulina the only the one and only wife of Mr. James Samo and um, I'm saying I love you if you have any question you can just um, drop it for me on my gmail princess at the Bola Paulina at gmail.com or you can message me on Facebook thank you God bless you bye